So the cold official police didn't always bear that name. Uh, the basic gun was introduced in 1908, and it was called the New Army Revolver. Colt's double action swing out cylinder revolvers date to 1889, and that's when the first swing out gun, the Army and, and Navy guns, uh, were introduced and adopted. These guns were chambered for the 38 long Colt cartridge. Uh, the problem with that cartridge is, as the U.S. Army uh, found in the Philippines, is uh, high velocity, lightweight bullets against fanatical tribesmen in the Philippines, probably not a good idea. As a matter of fact, uh, there were a number of instances of Moro tribesmen being shot six times with one of these Colts, and they weren't stopped until they took a crag rifle butt to the head. As the military turned away from double action 38 caliber revolvers to the 1911 pistol and 45 ACP, Colt realized that their market was becoming less military and more police. They improved the Army Special model and introduced it as the Colt Official Police. The Colt Official Police probably became the predominant police sidearm of the mid 20th century. It was offered with four, five, or six inch barrels. The primary and most popular chambering was 38 Special. When Smith & Wesson introduced a souped up version of the 38 Special called the 3844 Heavy Duty. This was kind of a predecessor of the 357 Magnum and it was marketed heavily as a more powerful round appropriate for police use. Now Smith & Wesson offered it only in their large heavy end frame revolver. It was too large and too powerful for their six shot medium frame revolver, the K-frame 38 military and police. However, the Colt official police had been designed for originally 38 and 41 caliber cartridges, so it had a little bit more heft to the frame and cylinder, and Colt advertised that their official police would handle these new hot loads developed by Smith & Wesson, the 3844 heavy duty loads. By 1935, uh, the 2520 and 41 Colt uh, cartridges had been discontinued, but the gun continued to soldier on uh, in, in 38 Special. And if you looked in the holsters of American law enforcement from about 1908 to 1910, uh, all the way up into the 1950s, uh, you would find Colt official polices. Uh, there were different barrel lengths, uh, and, and there were different stock materials, uh, and the guns mechanically stayed pretty much the same. This is a, a six shot swing out cylinder revolver with an unshrouded ejector rod. Uh, when you look at a Colt Python, you look at that, that fully lugged barrel, didn't happen on the official police. There were no lugged barrels on the official police. Uh, the guns were discontinued from manufacture uh, at, at the end of World War II, uh, but there was a special version of this gun uh, manufactured uh, during World War II specifically for uh, uh, plant guards and industrial security, uh, and, and some made it into the Department of Defense. But these were very rough finished guns. Uh, they were called the Colt Commando, and actually they're a fairly rare gun. There are a lot of variants with the official police. You've got two inch barrels, you've got four inch barrels, you've got six inch barrels. Uh, most guns had square butts, but there were also some round butt guns, which are considered far more rare. Uh, and the official police, most of these guns were used. I mean, they were issued to American law enforcement. So you'll see official polices at gun shows and, and at collector auction sites. Uh, they'll have a lot of, a lot of barrel wear uh, in terms of, of coming in and out of a holster, but you look inside, they usually have pretty good barrels. You, you can find them with property marks on the uh, back straps or the butt straps of the gun all the time. And uh, one of my favorites uh, is one that I, I haven't had for that very long a period of time, uh, but it's one of my favorite guns. Uh, because it comes from that early interwar period, and it's a, uh, a New York State Trooper gun. And it has uh, a pair of custom ivory grips mounted to the gun. It's a, uh, it's a real beauty, and it's very comfortable to shoot as well. And uh, that was part of the popularity of the official police. 
uh, was the fact that it was a uh, it was a it was a good nice handling gun, and that's why it fa found favor in name and in practice with police departments all over the country. The version that uh, captured the hearts of many civilian shooters. I mean, cops were told they had to buy one. But civilian shooters very much fell in love with the target version of the Colt official police, which was known as the officer's model target. And in the 1930s, Colt produced that gun. It was an official police with adjustable sights and a heavier barrel. They produced it in 38 Special, they produced it in 22 Long Rifles, and the, it was made specifically for the Camp Perry matches because Colts and Smith and & Wesson recognized that, that the country's handgunners were fixated on what was used by the winners at Camp Perry. The Colt official police can be broken up really into two issues. There's the first issue, pre-World War II, up until 1946, and then there's the second issue, or post-war guns. Colt continued production on the official police from 1947 to 1969. Now, after the war, they only made them in 22 long rifle and in 38 special. The official police represents Colt at the pinnacle of its gunmaking prowess. Uh, the Colt revolvers produced from 1908 until just before uh, America's entry into World War II are beautiful. The bluing on these guns, the polish beneath that bluing, the fitting of the parts done by skilled artisans in the Colt Hartford factory has really not been matched by anyone before or since. <laughs>